exciting time for our program, uh, uncharted territories for the program, for myself. I've never coached in one of these, so super excited. We're trying to keep the uh, distractions to a minimum, knowing that there's a lot of hype surrounding the Final Four. That's going to be a big distraction to players, but I think our guys stayed pretty locked in during the Sweet 16 week, and we're, we're really focused on what they had to do against Carolina and Clemson. I'm hoping we're able to maintain the same focus. Uh, UConn's obviously super talented. I mean, they're picked to win it. They've kind of run through the tournament the last year and this year. Uh, don't think they've even had a single digit win. So, you know, we've got a daunting task in front of us, but, you know, we're, we're going to give our guys a game plan and they, they've done a pretty good job getting locked in the scouting reports here these uh, last four games in the tournament. And, you know, we're, we're going to give them a game plan that will give us a chance and we're going to have to make some shots. UConn's going to need to miss some shots. You know, they're, uh, you know, we're going to try to play the way we play. We're not going to change our style. We're going to try to play fast. You know, UConn's transition game's elite, uh, so it's not like they're going to slow it down on us. When they get in the half court, They their sets run a little longer. So if you guys that have gotten all into analytics look, and their tempo's slow like it shows on Ken Palm, uh, it's more because their half court sets are pretty elaborate and take some time. It's not because they don't run. Like if you watch their 30 0 run on Illinois, they get out and run. So our transition D's got to be great. They will run on you. Just if they don't get a layup, then they, they I mean, they probably run the best sets of anybody I've seen all year. So we've got to do a great job in transition. We've got to do a great job guarding the half court. We've got to do a great job rebounding it because they get you on the O boards. They've got the, you know, we had the number one offense in the country for a while. Um, Right, so got hurt, and we fall. They have the number one offense in the country now, but they also have a top five defense. So they've kind of combined both sides of the ball that are elite, and we've got our hands full. So uh, today was the first day. Right, so was able to practice. He was limited in what he could do, but glad he was out there. And then, based on you know, he's got day to day evaluations based on how tomorrow morning's evaluation goes. You know, we'll see where he uh, goes the rest of the week. Our hopes are that he's going to be able to play on Saturday, though. And then Nick, you know, you guys were all in practice and saw he's uh, he's playing. Uh, he's tough. He's kind of gotten through this foot injury that he's had. And, you know, I thought he looked pretty good in practice today. So, you know, and no, nobody's going to be 100% at this time of the year. We know that. Just some, some guys are a little more banged up than others at this point. Coach, I just want to ask about uh, Klingon, what you see from him, what stands out, and how does a guy like Irwin kind of give you guys a look at practice being being 42? Yeah, I mean, Irwin was SEC player of the year, scored it pretty well in the post. He's uh, not young like Klingon. He's not near as big, so he can't give us a exact look, but but it gives us pretty good look on a lot of post players uh, in practice, so it's nice that we've got Irwin, you know, as a grad assistant that's able to kind of go in on the scout team uh, sometimes. But look, look, so... Our analytics company, based, you know, they kind of ran the numbers. Like Zach Eady's the most efficient post player in the country. We played against him. He's obviously really good. Uh, Klingon's the second most efficient post player in the country. Like the, the points per chance when he gets the ball in the post are second best in the country behind Eady. So we've got our hands full. You know, a Baycott was good. We played against some of the best picks in the country. You know, at the non-conference, we had Eady, Balo, uh, Kalkbrenner, you know, we've uh, had Tennessee and Adu. We've had Tolu Smith. We just played against Baycott with North Carolina. Um, but Klingon's a little different. He's not quite as big as Edie, but he's bigger than the rest of those guys. And he, and, he, and he passes really well. So, you know, you look at – if you don't double him, we've had issues guarding the post. If you double him, he passes well. Like, you got to – pick your poison a little bit and we're still trying to figure out exactly what we want to do with that but you know it, you may have to mix it up I mean if you give really good players the same thing over and over and over again they they figure it out and he's been pretty good passing out some teams have been good playing him one-on-one -on -one, but they've also had a little bit bigger rim protection you know and we, we've been good with Kind of mixing it up a little bit, maybe like we did with Baycott. So we're we're still looking at all that stuff and 
we're just starting to put the scout in. We've got, you know, three more days of practice before we play to, to actually get it all in. Yeah, uh, Nick Pringle, how, how has his defense improved these last few games, or how have you seen his defense evolve uh, this season? You know, I, I, he moves well. He's been playing tough. I mean, like double-digit rebounds. We've given him a little little bit of help with, you know, kind of trapping the post a little bit. You know, we, we some, of, some of him may be struggling on defenses, some on us not putting him in the right spots all the time, too, like kind of us trying to figure out what works best with him. You know, but I, shoot, he's given us everything he's got these last four games. I think he's rebounded really well. You know, he's battled in there with some of the better bigs. I mean, you look at the last two games. I mean, Baycott and P.J. Hall, maybe the two best bigs in the ACC, and he kind of battled them head to head. You know, both games and, and didn't back down at all. So, you know, I, you know, we maybe should have been helping him with some doubles and. A little more digging down and a little bit of that because, you know, he's strong, he's athletic, you know, he's just not as big maybe as someone, but he moves his feet better and he can move. So we, we just we had to play to his strengths a little bit more. I think we're figuring it out better late than never, but he, he's, he's been significantly better for us over, over this tournament run for sure. Nate, I'm going to try to ask this correct way. So, as you know, the Final Four is so – huge it's almost like a championship in and of itself so it's like reaching that right so here you are is there some kind of and the only word i can think of is relaxation that may not be the right word to the team in that you've made it here now let's just let loose let's play like we play you know let the chips fall where they may kind of thing right yeah there's a little bit of that especially somebody showed me where the um was it the fourth largest uh, point spread going in, in the Final Four in history. So, you know, nobody's going to pick us to win. You know, kind of playing with house money a little bit, if you will. But, you know, our, our guys, we weren't supposed to beat Clemson. We weren't supposed to beat North Carolina. A lot of people were picking against us because Grand Canyon. I mean, and I, I get it. Like, our defense hasn't been good all year. You know, you, you need a good defense to win in the postseason. But I think if you go run the numbers on our four games, if you take out from the time we got up 31 on Charleston, just take those minutes out because our guys relaxed a little bit as what human nature would allow you to do when you're up 31. I'm not saying it's right, and I wish we had, and I wish we'd done a better job closing that game against Charleston. But if you take out the time from when we got up 31 on them and look at the rest of the minutes in this tournament, our defense has been pretty good. Not UConn's level good, but pretty good. So, you know, if you take a top three offense, and when we were healthy, we had the number one offense for a majority of the year, and put it together with a top 20 or 30 defense, you can be pretty good. So, you know, I we're not going to be picked to win. I know that. But sometimes, you know, the best best team, the one that's picked, doesn't always win. So we, we were an underdog against Carolina. Not as big as we are now, but but we figured out a way to win. So I don't think our guys are going to relax to the point where they're not going to play hard and be ready to play. I think we 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 played hard like these last four games. We're going to go in playing as hard as we can, but there's not going to be a ton of pressure on us. Like we've made the school's first Final Four. You know, we're going to enjoy the fact that we're there. That there's only four teams left playing. The entire world basketball world i mean this isn't just the u.s watching this this is all basketball across the globe watching the final four they're all gonna like it's great but you're there we're, we're gonna try to win every game we play we try to win it so we're gonna we're gonna give them a scouting report that we think can work now yeah, there's been a lot of really good scouting reports that, that went into the game and then it didn't look so good after the game but but we're gonna we're gonna put one together that i think is gonna be good and our guys are going to play hard. They're going to give it what they got, and we're, we're going to we're going to try to win the game, obviously. But they're good, so I, I don't know that there's going to be a relaxation. But there's going to be a like we shouldn't be playing nervous. We should be playing free, hard, max effort, but with some confidence, knowing that we've got here, but also a little bit of freedom, if you will.
Hi, Coach. Right here. When you were recruiting Mark Sears, did you think that he could play, be such a dominant player at this level? Because he didn't have to carry the team a whole lot last season. He obviously has a lot this year. I mean, he didn't have any high major scholarships coming out of high school. We probably screwed up and didn't offer him out of high school. It's probably not a probably. We did screw up. Uh, you know, he goes to Ohio. He's pretty good. I was in that league. I called a lot of coaches in the league. They said, yeah, he's good enough for you. Nobody told me he's going to be this good. I didn't think he was going to be this good when we got him. Even last year, I think he surprised a lot of people being the second leading scorer on the number one team in the country. But I mean, he's literally improved every single summer from like high school to prep school to freshman year. Didn't shoot it well as freshman year to sophomore year. To ju like he just he keeps improving. He get that, but that's because he works. I mean, he gets in the gym and really works. Like he's, you know. We're at the last week of the season. He's we practiced yesterday morning. He's back in here in the afternoon. I wouldn't doubt if he's in at night. Like he he comes in and works. So I did I think he was going to be this good? I, look, nobody did. Maybe his mom did, but uh, I don't think anybody. And his dad's pretty confident too. I, like he's got a great family. I, I don't think anybody thought I, like most outstanding player in the regionals to send send us to the final four. That 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 would have been a little, but. I'll say this, when he did get here and started playing live last summer, he was better than I thought, better point guard, better at everything, really shot it well, and he's just continued to improve in all aspects. And I really think his leadership and his defense have significantly improved here over the last month, which has enabled us to get what we're getting. If his leadership and defense don't improve like it has, we're not playing right now. Our season's over because of – that we're still playing, and he—I mean—he's as good all-around guard as there is in the country over the last uh, month or so. Y'all are one of the biggest underdogs, point spread-wise, in the last 50 years. You guys fourth, are, fourth largest, I heard, tied right? For fourth, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you guys use that as a? I didn't know that till I was walking in here. So I, I, we will definitely use that though. All the slights that everybody had going into the other games, our players took note. And now we were never, what is it, 11 and a half? Is that what somebody showed me? Yeah. We were never that big of underdogs. What was our, what, what, what were we against Carolina? Four and a half. It's only seven points off. It's a lot of points in the spread. <laughs> 11 and a half is a lot. We, uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'm sure our players will see that and use it. Just for you coaching against Dan uh, with the history that you have with his family and, and on this stage, what does that mean to you? I mean, it's super cool, actually. Like, you know, he recruited my kid, uh, E.C. Matthews, back. E.C. was really good guy, top 100 guard in the country uh, my last year at Romulus. He was a senior. And, you know, Danny Preston was the lead recruiter on E.C. And then at Rhode Island under the previous coach, and then Danny gets the job, retains Preston. Danny starts to recruit him along with Preston. Bobby comes in on some visits. They're trying to sell EC to be a point guard. And Bobby's arguably the best point guard to ever play college basketball. And so great selling points. I get to know Bobby through that, get to know Danny really well through the recruitment. Bobby gets the head job. You know. Bobby had been in, saw me work as a high school coach. They got a lot of respect for high school coaches, the two of them with their dad being a Hall of Fame coach. And Bobby gives me a chance, and uh, shoot, it was good for both of us. We win big. He gets the Arizona State job, and he's still there, which to be someplace for nine years, you know, it, it's good. And he's doing well. It's, it's ironic. It's in Phoenix right there with his brother. You know, I, I don't know that we'll be breaking bread Friday night with uh, me, Bobby, and Danny, but. It is kind of cool that we're playing each other in the uh, Final Four in Bobby's hometown, current hometown now. Um, you know, I Danny's one of the guys I talk to a lot during the year. He's obviously really good. We both have a high school background. We've both known each other for a long time. Uh, I probably won't be asking him his advice on how to handle uh, uh, the week of the Final Four since he's done a pretty good job at last year and done a pretty good job so far. But, you know, it's... Look, we're both going to get our teams ready to play. We're going to be super competitive. I'm sure he's going to be on the refs uh, as usual. Uh, I might 
be a little bit uh, as well. We'll both coach the game super intense, and then, you know, whoever wins at the end, we'll, we'll hug it out and uh, cheer for the other one in the uh, final and be friends again after the game. But, yeah, I don't – I mean, I, I did talk to him for a little bit yesterday. He's He's been great. I mean, we had a similar situation my, my – uh, Last year at Buffalo, when I played Bobby in the tournament, which you know it was my boss, it was a little different. But yeah, so this is the second time I played one of the Hurley brothers in the uh, NCAA tournament. This one's on a little bit bigger stage, so tons of respect for those guys. They got I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for either one. Like you know, Danny brought Bobby, got him in. Bobby brought me. Bobby's a mentor of mine, as is Danny, and so it, it is super cool that I'm playing against him. I just. I wish his team wasn't so good that I was playing against. But, yeah, it, it's cool. Thank so, you, all right. Thank thanks, you. guys. Yep. Uh,